Leslie. Questions for Coach Leslie, Greg? So, Jordan, the defensive improvements, um, I guess they, they've been slowly coming, but certainly sped up this past week and saw a lot better. Have you seen that? The, the, that's on the brink, and was it better? And, and if so, why this past week? <clears throat> yeah, I think it was. Um, I think it was. It was better. Just execution um, was way better. Uh, fundamentals, probably fundamentally, the best best game we've played, and um, you know they really, you know how they block their schemes, and and obviously with who they have behind uh, those guys can really get you in the <clears throat> with some moving pieces and you know they shifted and um and motion probably a little more than they have seemed like to me from the box um so they they can get you they can get your your eyes crossed up and I thought or I thought especially uh, in our front seven uh they really really kept their eyes where they needed to be they kept their leverage you know y'all have heard coach talk about you know, they really talk about two types of leverage on offense, which is hand leverage, pad leverage. We talk about a third on defense, which is gap leverage, and which is what you see a lot of mistakes <clears throat> sometimes. And a lot of those moving pieces get you crossed up. I thought that was the best we'd played. And then our distribution and our coverage well, and, our, our, and our eye control was, was way better. So just simple, simple things. You got a 45 play game to, to grade. I'm sure you probably had half the play. You probably had it already done by the time you were in the air. I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to a grade a game when you only got to defend 45 plays. Well, with the iPad, you just grade it during the game. So you've already, you've already watched it. So you're on Iowa State you've already watched it two or three times by the time you get to the end of the game because you're just, you know, when they're on the offense out there, you're just watching this. That's what I feel like. I feel like I've looked, why do I need to grade it on the plane? I've already graded it twice um, during the game. So, no, it, it was, uh, it does. <clears throat> it makes it, makes it easy when you, when you play a game like that. Those are, those are, those are good ones to coach in. Credit to our offense for <clears throat> for able to do that and, and give us give us that um, opportunity, you know. And and but when we needed to get off the field, we, we got off the field too. So um, it, it it was good. Has going going up into giving you a different look on things as far as what you're saying and, and how you coach uh, Brown talked about being removed from the emotion. Yeah, I, yeah, and that's probably the the most important thing. I don't think it gives you a different look. I just think it changes how, you know, what the what the look is and how you approach each play, and and you're able. You know, obviously, you see more. Um, only seeing like actually seeing, it, you just kind of see the big picture of things, and you're able to, you know, to probably get your kids in some better positions uh, than you normally normally would. Um, just kind of slows down the, you know. The emotion is really, it's not necessarily emotion. It's just, you know, there's a lot of things that go on <clears throat> on the sideline. There's a lot of moving pieces and there's a lot of things where you're, you know, you're two and three plays ahead, whether that's, you know, defense to special teams, offense to special teams, and there's a lot of moving pieces. And so it just kind of calms things down. I don't say emotional, it just kind of calms it down a little bit. Whether you like it or not, with the two or record up there, you ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I actually had one of the one of the somebody I was a fan there at the game, and he, as we were walking down after the game, he was you know, hey, stay in the box, <laughs> plan to. Well, it's more, I guess more clinical, right? I mean, you're down there, you see, you, you don't have the eye contact with the players. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're making the calls, but you don't get to see their eyes. Is that? Is that? Yeah, the, and, you know, honestly, going back, the only reason that I stayed down starting the, the starting the year was trying to get a feel for. The, the changes that we have in college football with the, with the green dot and the iPad. And so there was going into it, there was more of a um, trying to get a bead on operational things, which quite honestly, the, what made the ultimate decision for me was is really there really wasn't a big difference in what it was last year. I, I, I really thought about going to the box last year. Um, <clears throat> but now that I'm now that I'm there, um, I'll never go back. Just to clarify, was it a decision that did you bring up to Coach Brown that, hey, I'd like to go up in the box yeah. now, or did he? Yeah, yeah. that's he something that I wanted. Like I said, I actually thought about it at times last year. Um, and then, again, with the changes, it was really going into a lot of unknowns with how that was going to work. And probably one of the things that I um, probably underestimated, particularly home games, is, is the crowd noise through the mic 
as you go and and it didn't really have an effect but it, it does you know it's just another thing that's uh can be a distraction and, and it wasn't but i just you know i thought well hey you know if we can eliminate that that can be one more thing that helps uh but it was a, a thing that that i wanted to do and i brought up thought it would help everybody um as you know as we get into uh, conference play so are there things you miss though by not being down the field seeing kids in the aisle talking to them are there things you think that are negative of it maybe not negative no right. yeah no, I, I know what what you're asking <clears throat> no not really i mean yeah there's a um i love the the I love the emotion of a sideline, like the the when you start getting into a rhythm and you're you're getting stops and you're getting third down stops and you're excited with the players and that's that's just just fun, I think for any coach. Um, but I think the the big picture of things is way more important and staying, you know, on the sideline. I think you always try to be a couple of plays ahead how you think. And I think in the top you try. I, I'm, I'm a couple of drives ahead. I'm in the, a little more situational things and, you know, kind of looking through the depth of whatever we're doing and getting things kind of lined up and in, in, in your head and um, which is much easier without, you know, a lot of a lot of moving pieces. I mean, our sideline is fine. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Oklahoma State, but there's, you know, not a lot of room. So glad that that was and, and it was really hot and it wasn't so much in the press box. That they had like a players only meeting after the pit game and kind of trying to hold each other accountable, say, hey, we're not playing the standards, we're trying to hold ourselves to. Could you sense a difference in the way they carried themselves after that? And, and I mean, obviously, you know, they've been playing very well since then, I mean, or, or better since then. Can, could you tell a difference after they? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it, and, and I w obviously wasn't down, but I think the big difference was probably. Um, after Kansas scored on the last reverse, and I and I very simply I, I called down and and we were talking about you know and our and on the sideline I called down and I was like <clears throat> you know how are they and and the guys were like hey man they they don't they're not blinking they're not they're not gonna, they're not missing a beat so we were already into okay when we get a stop this is what we're gonna do this is what we think they're gonna do this is how we're gonna get it done and <clears throat> that's probably the the last five minutes of that game, just the opposite of what happened the week before. We're on the other end of it, and that was probably the biggest change to me. And and um, you know whatever was was done or said in that meeting that's between them. And they're all, you know, they're great kids. They they nobody in, was more upset and embarrassed at that point than they were. Um, and kudos to them for coming in and and handling it. And that's what they should do. And um, because when they get when they get out there, they, they don't have me or Jeff or Shadon or AJ or, or, or Vic. Or, they're, they're the ones that are out there. Um, and so, you know, continuous improvement and growth in that, and, and hopefully it stays that way. I was going to ask, how nice is it when, they, when that group of players takes that personal responsibility, and it's not something you have to come in and, and, and beat into them Correct. or drive into them. They're, take, they're doing it themselves. Yeah, and, and, you know, we talk about it. And all off season, and you trying to get the point. You have a chance when you're player led, when you're coach led. Not that you can't do it. It just it's it's a lot it's a lot harder. Um, and and I think that that's something that's even harder with the environment that we're in because you know I've heard me say this like when you have guys, particularly transfers, and they they are experienced and they played a lot of football. They haven't played a lot of football together. And that means a lot. And I think the more they do that, then the better that they get. And they start to kind of play off each other and feed off each other and figure out, you know, leadership styles. And and you just, you know, it's a, you just always, you're just trying to get better every week. And I think they, uh, nobody wants to more than them. And I think they took it, they, and they've taken it on their own. I think it's definitely helped. Speaking of a player that transferred, that played a lot of football, but not necessarily here, Gene Joseph obviously had a big game. Talk, he even talked about how he feels more comfortable now as a vocal guy than maybe he was previously used to. What have you seen from him in that maturation process from spring to, to now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, it, again, I think it's, it's, you know, you, 
I think you come in a lot of times and and people get experienced, confused for experience when it's um, when you've been the same place for a long time. And I think that 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 just takes playing the game. You can practice and scrimmage all you want to, but it's hard to mimic situations that we've been in in a scrimmage or in a practice or in an OTA or in a workout or in a film room. It's just hard. to. You're never going to be able to do that. And the only way that happens is that is playing together. And I think that's the, the more comfortable. The more they do that, the more comfortable they are, whether that's with the communication piece or just lining up and playing the defense. Um, and so I think that's really, really helped Jaheim. And Jaheim's an extremely smart kid. Um, and so the more that, yeah, I mean, you got to think from their standpoint, right? They've been in one system for that amount of time in a totally different league, a to seeing a totally different styles of offense. And then now, you know, all of a sudden, here we are, it's, it's something different, even though you've played a lot of ball. Um, and the more they play, the better that they are. And I think that's where we're at with Jaheim, and it showed definitely showed Saturday. Iowa State, uh, points of emphasis. Um, I mean, they got three ball carriers averaging, I guess, more than five yards a carry. A big wide receiver. They got two guys getting primarily all their passes. And, of course, Beck, where do you start with them when you have to think about emphasis of stopping them? Well, the first thing is alignment. They, they make you, uh, they stress you with different formations and shifts and motions, and they always have. Um, they've had <clears throat> a couple of different guys in their system, but the, sense, the systems have pretty much stayed pretty close to the same. Um, they use the, use the tight end as well as anybody in the country, um, and they, they, really, they really put some pressure on you. With all with all those moving pieces, and <clears throat> not that the play sets are much different from from what you see, you know, throughout the league, but how they present it, and it's always a challenge. Use their tight ends well. Um, use the use the all of that to help the quarterback, and the quarterback obviously has to has to execute and be smart and know where to go with it, and, and which which Beck does. So um, this would be a huge challenge. From your perspective, is what's making Beck so effective under center? Uh, he's really smart. Just knows knows where to go with it. Um, I'm not gonna say sneaky athletic because it's it's not very sneaky. I mean, he's he's fast, can run, he's athletic. Um, but does a good job extending plays, and he's, I think it's um, most quarterbacks in our league are are good at that and have been for a long time. Um, but he fits into into that offense. Um, extremely well, and then, like I said, I think it, I think the smart piece is knowing where and when, particularly um, you know, any team you get at this point in the season um, that, that has very very low sack numbers. Um, not only is it a credit to their to the front, but it's all it's a lot of times a credit to the quarterback and knowing when and where to go with the ball. Jackson, shifty guy. You see any Jaheim White in him? Oh, very similar. Yeah. Um, Jaheim White, very similar to the kid at Pitt. Um, yeah. You know, shifty can get lost in there and and pop right out. Um, you know, can stick, can make one cut moves, get vertical, and get vertical, make another cut and get sideways. You know, that's <clears throat> is um, always a, a a challenge tackling guys like that. Jordan, uh, some of the stuff you're talking about with with uh, Jaheim and just transfers in general is. KK, uh, is that kind of like an example that a little bit different, but just find a position for him that actually fits his ability. <clears throat> maybe it's spirit, maybe it's corner, maybe it's safety, I don't know, but it does take a period of time to settle something like that in. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, and, it, and every, not that every coverage is different, how it, how it taught from school to school or, you know, whatever it may be, is a lot of times different. Um, I think for him and you know, for Saturday, you know, you, you you know, he was a played a lot of corner at Jacksonville State, and I think down underneath coverage allows him to use some of those same skills, um, playing spear, nickel, whatever you want to call it. It's kind of a lot of the same same skill sets can show up right there underneath. Um, you may not be playing man, maybe playing zone, but it it's, it helps him. We kind of saw um, during the off week. And that is something that that could help us, um, and you know, and Aubrey got a little banged up, and we really didn't miss a beat um, with him. So, a great job by him. And then, just 
what you're coaching or how you're coaching in the secondary, I understand just the familiarity and just reps, right? That gets better. But have you taught things differently, coaching differently that's kept guys around the ball where whether they're knocking them down or they're, they're just there to make tackles now as opposed to having to run up? It seems like just generally, I don't know, just like more near the ball, more active around it too. Yeah, I'm, I, again, I think it has a lot to do with, you know, you go into a season and, and you can practice and OTA and scrimmage a lot, but a lot of times you don't you don't know what what it is to the game, and I think you go into it always thinking there's certain things that you can do, and there's certain things that you may be better at, and all of a sudden it may not be the case, and you can sit there and complain about it, or you can adjust it and continue to get better and improve, and then maybe find some different spots, some different. Um, not necessarily coverages, but how you're running them, maybe adjust to your, your personnel. You got to do what they can do. Um, so I think all of that, a combination of all of that has definitely helped. And then, and then there's, you know, the more they play, the, the better, the better they are. Um, and so that is, that's kind of, not that it's any secret sauce or formula, but it's just reps and getting better and continue to improve and just work. And I think that's, that's kind of been where we're at. Players needing to see things on the field, no matter how many times you see it in other areas. You see a lot of, you know, two backs or one back, one tight, whatever, but you don't see a whole lot of the two tight ends to the degree Iowa State does, and even three at times. So is that the challenge, the differentiator this week in getting ready for them? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, our offense uses, you know, the tight ends and in different ways. and. You know, we see two and three of them, but I mean, everybody that that uses those systems is the presentation is always a little bit different with how they use them, and so you just you know you get in a film room, try to get a try to get a beat on it, and uh, but it is it's unique. They've done it for for a while now, and and there's always wrinkles and things that you're going to see. They're week to week, year to year with them, but they're still the still a redundant theme of using them, using the tight ends a lot, and so. Um, probably more than any other team we face. So this it's a huge challenge. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.